Good one. Arena. Is this right here? Yeah, that's her. Okay. 52, yeah. Okay, 52. This list is a list of foreign agents, people who are either receiving funding from or influence from foreign entities. Johnny Harris recently released a video about what it's like being a YouTuber inside Putin's Russia, and he raised a very interesting topic of how censorship works in Russia. I, as a YouTuber that comes from inside Putin's Russia, and just a regular Russian guy, I wanna say huge thanks to Johnny and his amazing team for raising this topic. As somebody who lived in Russia a decent part of my life, I could say that video is pretty accurate at representing what it's like living in modern Russia. And in today's video I want to get a bit deeper into one of the rabbit holes that Johnny talked in his video briefly, I wanna talk more about my favorite Russian musicians who stood up against Putin's war machine and got punished for that. I'll also talk more about foreign agents in Russia and censorship in general, because it has a great deal on the freedom of speech in my country. I think after watching this you might understand what it's like living in modern Russia a bit better. So I got the idea for my video once I saw this moment. Johnny talked about Irina Schichman, individual number 52 in the foreign agent list. Then I saw a familiar name under number 53. You see this Alexeyev Ivan Alexandrovich. That's actually my favorite Russian musician. He is known as Noise MC and I was listening to him like since I was a teenager. And here we are right now, you see me talking to you and me staring at that list of foreign agents seeing his name in the list, knowing that I actually also might be qualified for getting into this list. Let Johnny explain how it all started. And this is where that list that I was looking at kind of started, and it started small and bureaucratic. Putin's party passes this foreign agent law, basically saying that any organization in Russia that receives any money from any other country is now required to put a big badge on anything they publish that says that, like, hey, I'm a foreign agent. And if they don't comply, they have to pay a huge fine. The first edition of that foreign agent law might be applied only to organizations, and regular people did not care about that much. But over time, the level of pressure that our government put onto people in terms of censorship and freedom of speech was getting stronger and stronger, and starting from the end of 2020 we got our first individuals who got labeled as media foreign agents. And again, regular people did not care about that much because the pioneers of that list were journalists and various kinds of political activists, and regular people were like, we are way too far from them. That's actually what 20-year-old Nikki might think about, but right now I think that the foreign agent stuff is affecting life of regular people like a lot. And we saw that happening right after Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022. In a matter of weeks, it wasn't just about politically active people anymore, that was literally about everyone who didn't want the war to happen. That agent list wasn't about active opposition anymore, we got a bunch of random people getting into that list of fame consistently every given Friday until this very day, which became just another weapon in Russia's rich arsenal of political censorship. Russian internet meme, LGBT blogger, a cartoonist, a philosopher, actor, physicist, chess grandmaster, a teacher, and a bunch of musicians that millions of Russians, including myself, listen daily. You know, back in April 2022, I was still staying in Russia and I was posting a lot of content related to war, related to Russia and Ukraine, and that time I see my channel growing and I was thinking like, could there be any, like, real troubles for me posting my videos? And the answer is surely yes. In fact, anyone posting anything anti-war or anti-Russian government in general might get their lives complicated, starting from bureaucratic hell, like foreign agents go daily inside and outside of Russia, until the real time in Russian jail. You perhaps heard about the Navalny story, but I tell you that there are thousands of political prisoners in Russia, people no different than me. And you know, the only thing that actually protects me and any other people who dare to say anything anti-war in Russia is the fact that there is fish bigger than us. I could feel kinda safe knowing that who cares about my tiny YouTube channel when there is big fish like Yuri Dude with his 10 million channel audience or Noise MC with his fan base of millions of people. Yeah, let me introduce the heroes of today's video. Zimfira that somehow influenced me to start my YouTube channel a few years ago. Noise MC, that I listened since I was a stupid kid. And Morgenstern, that I don't really listen to because I barely understand his Russian, but still he is a big deal for Russians. 
Let's start in chronological order. A short story about Morgenstern, who became the first foreign agent in our today's list. Morgenstern is one of the biggest, or even the biggest, Russian rapper that has a very controversial reputation. Roman Nofuckers actually made a great video about him a year ago, I'll link it in the description. So two facts about Morgenstern that are actually very interesting in context of our today's video. First of all, he has a large, like really massive, audience of his fans, basically people of younger generation in Russia. And secondly, he never actually had a strong political opinion and he never criticized Russian government at all. But it kinda changed last year, and the first clip he posted after Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, it was actually having a strong political statement. <laughs> Like the lyrics he had in the song clearly had some quotation from like from the Ukrainian side and it didn't get away from attention of Russian government. So Morgenstern was quite fast claimed to be a foreign agent. And the legal reason for claiming him a foreign agent is quite interesting. So basically the only reason, the only thing that Russian government could use to claim him to be a foreign agent is his YouTube channel and revenue that he gets from a foreign company. So that's what happens when people with real large audience deliver ideas that don't really get along with our government message. And now coming to my real favorite musicians. Zemfira is a legend, literally, my parents' generation was listening to her songs and growing up with that. I think it's fair enough to say that it also majorly affected my generation and my personal life as well. I remember I had a huge life turn, it was in 2019, I was sitting and listening to one of Zemfira's songs, and I decided to quit my previous job and reconsider my life, and as a result I'm sitting here talking to you. <laughs> Zemfira is not really politically active, although if I compare her to Morgenstern, at least she has some clear opinion on stuff, and she does not fear to show it publicly. Since the very first day of Russia sending troops to Ukraine, she had a clear message against the war. Literally the first day, because by coincidence, Zemfira was having a concert on February 24th, exactly same day as Russia invaded Ukraine. Can you imagine how big the pressure was for Zemfira that day? Just imagine waking up in the morning, getting ready to perform in front of like thousands of people, and receiving the news about Russia getting into Ukraine, and knowing that everything that you prepared for your concert is actually not gonna work out. So what Zemfira did is she excluded all happy songs from her playlist for that specific day, and instead of that she added one song that she hasn't performed for quite a while. That song's name is Nestrelaiti, or Do Not Shoot in Russian language, and I think that was just a clear message about what she actually thinks about this Russia-Ukraine thing. So Zemfira had a concert on February 24th, 26th, and shortly after she decided to quit Russia, of course, what else could she do? And after that she released two new videos on her YouTube channel, and basically the first video was a new musical clip for her Nestrelaiti song, the Don't Shoot song, and in that clip she used the real footage of what was going on in Ukraine. And the second release she had was a new song that she called Cannon Food or Cannon Fooders. I think the name just speaks for itself. Zemfira was claimed a foreign agent just recently, literally two weeks ago, and that actually surprised me, because yes, she is a public person, she is a popular musician, and yet she does not have that active political opinion anyways. Especially compared to Noise MC, the individual number 53 in the list. <laughs> If you ask me who is the artist that I respect the most, that might be Noise MC. His lyrics, his songs, his music is just next level to me. And what makes me respect him even more, he has real strong political and social opinion, and he does not stay silent about it, even knowing that it might cause troubles to him and also to his family. My name is Ivan Alexeyev, I'm an artist, a musician, I'm performing under the artistic name Noise MC since 2003. I'm working exclusively on my music and I don't have any other profits. На эти деньги я полностью содержу свою семью. Мы с женой воспитываем двоих детей, они ходят в приличную частную школу. За годы карьеры я накопил на приличную московскую квартиру. Я родился в маленьком провинциальном городе, 
я рос в бедной семье, мне известна цена успеха и мне есть что терять. Учитывая все эти обстоятельства, мне, по идее, на первый взгляд, не стоило бы выступать с поддержкой Алексея Навального. 23 января мне стоило бы, на первый взгляд, остаться дома и промолчать. Я часто слышу «подумай о своих детях». Я именно о них и думаю. И я не хочу, чтобы они жили в стране, где за инакомыслие человека можно убить, а если вдруг это не получится, посадить его в тюрьму. This actually was just a small part of Ivan's interview to Yuri Dut, who is also a foreign agent, and he runs a huge show on his YouTube channel, basically full of interviews with interesting people. The great thing is that Yuri adds English subtitles to most of his interviews, so you can actually watch it yourself and learn what it's like to be a popular Russian artist that uses his voice fully. Eventually, Noise MC had to leave Russia together with his family. He relocated to Lithuania. I come here to make a sound of peace and to let you know that in my country there are still many voices which are clearly against the war despite they are trying to be muted. I can just imagine what these guys are coming through right now. I basically admire them a lot because the stakes for speaking out against the war for people like Noise MC or Manetochka, Zemfira and Morgenstern are much much higher than for myself personally, for example. And of course, they are not the only Russian artists who actually said anything against the war. Some of the names you actually might know even internationally, maybe you heard about Little Big or Manizhe, they represented Russia on Eurovision 2020 and 2021. Maybe you heard the name of Alla Pugacheva, who is simply an another legend. Maybe you know I Speak or Aximiron. If you are into listening Russian music, surely you know the band Kino and Viktor Tsoi, who actually died a while ago and still his songs are being banned and censored again these very days. Here I should make a little confession. I actually recorded this part of my video once again after watching Roman Nofucker's video on exactly the same topic. Roman is actually a music guy, so he knows much more about musicians and art, so he kind of nailed it of giving you a general overview of general story of all these censored artists and musicians that we have in Russia. Watch it, it's super interesting. So I think these three people are kind of a good illustration of what it's like to voice your opinion in Russia while being a media person. Morgenstern doesn't really care about politics, society or people. Zimfura, she cannot stay silent about certain things. And Noise MC, not only he cannot stay silent, he is more than ready to take an action and use his voice for good. These three people that I shared to you today are actually very different, and yet last year they faced kind of similar situation. Their creative career is kind of over in Russia, at least physically. There is no chance they will have another tour across my country unless something big changes in our country. Does it mean that their career is actually over? I don't think so. Like Morgenstern, he moved to Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and he continues his career over there. Zimfira, she actually ended her stage career like seven or eight years ago, and right now she's staying outside of Russia. And Noise MC released a new song that actually describes his and my and million of other lives quite well. It literally says, my life is crossed out by letter Z, but I am building a new one. That's lyrics from Noise MC. Whew, that's a new experience for me to produce such kind of video, and I'm so glad that you are still staying with me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I actually prepared a music playlist for you with my favorite songs from Noise MC and Zimfira and a few other Russian musicians that kind of connected by one single thing. They opposed Russian government and they have damn good songs to listen to. You also can find links for my tiny cozy Patreon community, which is a great way to support my channel if you feel like doing it. I don't post there regularly yet, but I do a few cool things to my patrons like sending seasonal postcards from anywhere I'm staying around the world and also hosting monthly Zoom meetups. And lastly, there is also a link for my tiny Russian club community, which is a nice place for anyone who wants to learn and practice Russian language in friendly and accepting community. Спасибо and пока!